Hello Mario! In this video we're going to be looking at measuring instrument height. Instrument height is a very important factor when dealing with X, Y, Z or three dimensional coordinates. So when you're measuring measure instrument height it's one of the important aspects of that is measuring the height of the instrument. Now particularly where you want to get accurate heights, you'll need to measure the instrument height to an accuracy of one millimeter. This isn't in all cases, but in cases where you are measuring to that accuracy, you need to consider how you're measuring the instrument height. And as you can see in the attached diagram, it's quite probably that you're actually measuring a slope or slant height from the top of the mark to the instrument or target height mark. And that slant distance needs some small adjustment to get the correct height of instrument. In other words, the vertical distance from the top of the mark to the center of the instrument. The first thing to note with this measuring of instrument height is that you are actually measuring to the instrument or target height mark. And these are generally clearly shown on the instrument that you're measuring to. Be aware that in some cases the instrument you might be using, be it a total station or perhaps some sort of GPS antenna with a data recorder, may very well make allowances for the fact that you are measuring at the slight, at the slope or slant height and make allowances as to where you might measure on the instrument itself. Take the case of the Leica instruments where a measuring hook is used. The hook can be inserted into the tri-brack usually and then it's positioned in such a way that it is measuring um, directly or a a directly vertical height of instrument and this can be measured on the hook and then entered into the data recorder. In this case the data recorder or software in there knows um, the distance from the from the top of the hook to the correct position on the total station or GPS antenna. On some GPS antenna and some total stations for that matter, in the data recorder or the software associated with it, it is necessary to indicate where in fact you are measuring to. And there are a number of options there. One that come to mind would be with the Trimble GPS where you can measure either to the bottom of the antenna or to what they refer to as the center of the bumper. So it is important with whatever equipment you are using that you know that you are measuring to the correct instrument or target height mark. It is, you need to know whether the software is adjusting for how you're measuring or not. But let's have a look at the mathematics around it and how it all works. So as you can see in my diagram here where we've set up over a typical survey mark, in this case I've got one buried usually in New Zealand we bury them up 300 millimeters and we've measured from the top of the mark to a point or the instrument or target height mark. Now you'll notice that it's not possible to measure a vertical distance, there is some offset and we're calling that offset the radius which is the distance from the center of the instrument to the point where that you are measuring the instrument height to. And you're normally measuring this instrument height with a handheld steel tape measure, usually 0 to 10 meter tape measure. And usually you are holding the tip of the tape measure on the mark and then holding the tape measure up and measuring to the instrument height mark or the target height mark. It may well be uh, prisms to the center of the prisms that you're measuring to, but you must make absolutely certain 
that you are measuring to the correct target height mark. When measuring the height of instrument, you really only get one chance to get it right. If the height of the instrument is wrong for, for your setup, all of the measurements or height measurements that you make using that incorrect height will in turn be wrong. So let's have a look at the actual measurement itself. Um, as you can see the components of it are the slope or slant height and the radius, the distance from the centre of the instrument out to the point that you're measuring at and of course the height of instrument, the actual resultant height of instrument distance that you want to use in your calculations it being the vertical difference in height between the top of the mark and the instrument or target height mark. I haven't shown it here but you can see that these form the sides of what would be a right angle triangle and of course our old friend Pythagoras would come into play. So let's have a look at a bit of a formula here. So for the height of the instrument or target, um, HI usually referred to, um, that is equal to the square root of the uh, slant height squared minus the radius squared. So quite simple, uh, easily track back, you can easily track that back to Pythagoras. So here's a typical example here of a mark a set up, a sort of total station set up over a buried, typical buried mark. Slant height 1.674 meters, the radius 100 millimeters, but we need to have all our units the same when we do these calculations, so 0 0.1 metres. Put that into our formula to determine HI, height of instrument, and it's the square root of 1.674 squared minus 0 0.1 all squared. Uh, take the square root of that, of course, and it equals 1.671, a difference of 3 mils. So, you know, that if you're trying to get an instrument height to the nearest millimetre, of course, that three millimetres is significant. And typically, that's the typical situation that you would encounter, generally. Um, you may be using flush marks, of course, so you might have a slightly less uh, instrument height, possibly around the 1.5, but generally, somewhere between 1.5, 1.8, 2 metre max, is the sort of um, slant height that you're measuring or instrument height. And in that sort of range, we're talking about three, three mils, the, the difference between the slant height and the instrument height that we want. If, say, for instance, you are over a raised mark, perhaps a, a, a raised pyramid-type mark that's common in, in New Zealand, uh, benchmarks on the side of the road, we set the tripod up, however, the slant height from the top of the mark on top of the pyramid uh, might only be 0 0.652 metres. Radius would still be the same depending on using the same instrument. Uh, run that through the formula and we get 0 0.644 which um, is a difference of 8 millimetres. So it's with a shorter instrument height obviously the slant height and the, uh, slow, and the instrument height can become quite significant as, in, as we show in that case there where we've got a difference of 8 millimetres. Alright, so that's pretty much how it's done. Pretty straightforward, measure your slant height and what have you. So, you know, what, is all this, what does all this mean in the, in the uh, out there in the field? Well, we would use the slant height uh, reduction Remembering that a lot of software can do it automatically, we need to be aware that that's what's happening. Um, for accurate measurement, where we want to measure the height of instrument or our heights to plus or minus one millimetre. But that's not always the case. Sometimes we don't perhaps want to be quite that accurate or need to be quite that accurate uh, for the work that we're doing. So for less accurate heights, it may be that on on looking at it may be deemed not significant. Say if you wanted you know to be plus or minus ten mils, um, you know you could not worry about the slant height. Use the slant height as the instrument height, which um, you know that that can happen. But just be aware that you may have that slight inaccuracy in in there in your heights. 
um, possibly up to three me three millimeters or three to five mils, possibly, but not going to affect things. And there is a school of thought that suggests that if you measure your slant heights the same for every setup, they're going to have the same error in them. And in terms of heights, you're going to have a the slant the same sort of relative relative difference there, and it's um it's going to, not going to have any effect at all, or you know minimal effect. So you know you want to go the extra mile to get the extra accuracy. The height of instrument is critical when you are doing heights. Get the height of instrument right. Everything's right. Get the height of instrument wrong, and every reading that you do from that instrument station will be wrong by by that amount. So it is critical. Height of instrument is critical. You only get one chance to get it right. I only get one chance to get it right. So it's important that you get it right, and as surveyors we sort of look to do independent checks get an independent check check it in, a, in two ways so that we can make absolutely sure that we've got it right so independent checks well there are a number of ways of doing independent checks for instrument height measuring in two scales is a pretty common way and in fact we do have some tapes that have an imperial, say feet and meters on one, feet and inches on one side, and metric on the other. So you measure it in both in both scales, the imperial and the metric. Convert one to the other. Check that they're they're both giving you the same answer, and there you go. You bob's your uncle. Off you go. You're quite satisfied. You've got it right. Independent check. Very good. Um, just a point of caution there from bitter experience. Just check your feet and inches tape measure. Make sure that you know that it's either feet and inches or decimal feet. I had a situation where the tape measure was de decimal, uh, decimal feet. I thought it was feet and inches. So when I converted it, um, I couldn't get things to agree. But So it's very important that you know which one you've got. The decimal feet one's quite easy to pick in a way because it'll never have the 11 or 12 inches. It just goes uh, from 1 to 10. They're actually decimals of a foot. So there's no 11 or 12 inch figures on the decimal foot scale. So uh, that's just a quick way of checking. Uh, second way of checking your instrument height is to do a check shot onto another mark or other marks. So get your instrument all set up and then do a shot onto another known mark and check that you're getting the right answer, you know, within a within a few millimeters or within one or two millimeters. So that's a one way of checking your instrument height just to check it out onto other marks. You can actually um, work out if you have an accurate, very accurate uh, mark very close to where you're set up, you could um, observe onto uh, set your instrument as level and draw and observe onto a staff and, and work out the actual RL of your instrument uh, in terms of the other mark, which is um, something that you can be doing and some, some people use that. A uh, third way is to measure the instrument height in parts. So first of all, do your measurement with your slope, calculate it out, and then you could measure it in parts. So you could go from the mark to the top of the tripod, and then add on from the top of the tripod to the height mark on the instrument. Add those two together and make sure they agree with the total measurement. Um, you can, there are certain ways of determining the instrument height uh, independent of actually measuring the distance above the mark. Uh, this involves perhaps observing other known marks, so it's a bit of a, perhaps a subset of two, but uh, there are some that just set up their instrument at a random point and observe the two known points and determine the instrument height that way using a fixed height pole so that there's uh, everything is relative. So that, that's another thing, one that you consider or you may encounter. The other way uh, is if you have a party of two to each measure the height and write it down or record it and then compare the two 
the two measurements make sure you've got the same so that's uh, pretty much all I all a little bit about instrument heights just at a very simple level there are some more complexities um, regarding it especially around the software and that that's in data uh, data collectors and things like that that you need to be aware of you need to be knowing what they're doing but this is just a straight out way of just measuring it calculating it or checking it or whatever but one of the critical things that I'd like to leave you with is to be sure to check you are measuring to the correct point because if you measured say for instance you had a couple of prisms set up and I have done this it caused some big problems and you measured to the wrong point on both of them um, you can still get some good checks and things check out but but you're wrong so you you need to be absolutely sure to check that you are measuring to the correct point if at any time you're unsure ask or make very clear records as to what you have done or where you have measured to so there you go good luck with your measuring of the height of instruments